Hi, everybody. My name is Kevin from Washington University in St. Louis. I would like to thank the FUSS Symposium for giving me the great opportunity to share my work titled Sonogenetics for Locomotor Behavior Modulation in Freely Moving Mice. Sonogenetics combines ultrasound and genetics for non-invasive and cell type specific neuromodulation. First, neurons are transfected via viral via viral vectors to express ultrasound-sensitive ion channels to a specific neuron type. Only neurons that are transfected with the ion channels will respond to ultrasound stimulation, while the surrounding neurons will remain unaffected. In this way, we can, we can non-invasively investigate the causal link between neural circuits and behavior. Existing sonogenetic techniques utilize the mechanical effect from ultrasound to activate neurons transfected with mechanosensitive ion channels or proteins. There are multiple studies that have demonstrated the ability of many mechanosensitive ion channels to sensitize cells to ultrasound stimulation in vitro. Recently, multiple studies have demonstrated the feasibility of sonogenetics to modulate mouse behavior in vivo using mechanosensitive ion channels or proteins such as Preston, MSCLG22S, and TRPA1. Ultrasound can generate both mechanical and thermal effects in the brain. TRPV1-mediated sonogenetics is a promising neuromodulation tool that uses ultrasound-induced mild warming to activate thermal-sensitive TRPV1 for neuronal control. Our previous work demonstrated mouse motor control by targeting a deep brain region, the striatum. However, we did not demonstrate behavior modulation by targeting a superficial brain region. Modulating superficial brain region activity using this technique based on ultrasound-induced heating requires ultrasound parameter optimization to avoid skull heating-induced confounding effects and brain tissue damage. Therefore, the objective of my study was to evaluate the feasibility of, and safety of TRPV1-mediated sonogenetics to modulate locomotor behavior in a superficial brain region, the motor cortex. Adeno-associated virus was delivered to the left motor cortex in mouse to express TRPV1 primarily in excitatory neurons using the CAMK2 promoter. Successful activation of the selective neurons will be indicated by contralateral rotations in a locomotor behavior test. Control mice or TRPV1 negative mice were injected with the control virus. A wearable focused ultrasound transducer was used to target the left motor cortex at three acoustic pressures, zero, 0 0.7, and 1.1 megapascals. Other focused ultrasound parameters were consistent with those used in our previous report of TRPV1-mediated sonogenetics. Mice were sacrificed after the behavior test to evaluate the expression of TRPV1 and the safety of sonogenetics. The brains of TRPV1-positive mice were harvested, sectioned, and co-stained with TRPV1 antibody and NISL, a neuron staining marker, to evaluate the expression profile of TRPV1 in cortical neurons of the motor cortex. A representative fluorescent image shows that the expression of TRPV1 was confined to the motor cortex. While the non-injection side, non-injection control side did not show any expression of TRPV1, Using our, using our injection procedure, approximately 5% of the neurons in the motor cortex um, were transfected with TRPV1. The expression of TRPV1 was also confined to neurons, in which approximately 80% of the cells expressing TRPV1 were neuronal cells. These data demonstrate the feasibility of exogenous TRPV1 expression in the motor cortex and lay the foundation to facilitate TRPV1-mediated sonogenetic control of motor cortex behaviors. Here are representative videos recording the locomotor behavior of TRPV1-negative and TRPV1-positive mice at 0.7 MPa. Upon fuss stimulation, the TRPV1-negative control mouse displays no rotational preference in either direction. In contrast, upon fuss stimulation, the TRPV1-positive mouse displays contralateral rotational behavior, which in this case is clockwise. We demonstrate that TRPV1-mediated sonogenetics successfully achieves specific control of rotational behavior at 0.7 MPa. This figure shows quantification of the rotational behavior for TRPV1-negative and TRPV1-positive mice in two different groups, sham and 0.7 MPa. 
Here, angular velocity values above zero correspond to clockwise rotations, indicating activation of the neurons in the targeted motor cortex. Angular velocity values below zero represent counterclockwise rotations, indicating inhibition in the motor cortex. As we can see, ultrasound stimulation of TRPV1 positive mice at 0.7 megapascals induced clockwise rotational behavior, and the angular velocity was significantly higher than that of the sham group indicating successful activation of the motor cortex. As we can see for TRPV1 negative mice, no difference was observed between sham and 0.7 megapascals, indicating successful and specific neuromodulation at 0.7 megapascals. We then increased the acoustic pressure to 1.1 megapascal. We found that 1.1 megapascal did not evoke significant ch changes in angular velocity compared to the sham. However, 1.1 megapascal of TRPV1 positive mice achieved a significantly higher angular velocity than that obtained by fuss stimulation of TRPV1 negative mice. Although not statistically significant, fuss on occasion at 1.1 megapascal of TRPV1 negative mice evoked an increase in angular velocity in the counterclockwise direction compared with those at lower acoustic pressures. This suggests that bus stimulation at 1.1 megapascals without TRPV1 potentially induced neuromodulatory effects and generated a confounding impact on TRPV1-mediated sonogenetics at this high pressure. After the behavior test, we sacrificed the animal via transcardiac perfusion and harvested the brain. Gross pathology at 0.7 megapascal did not show any signs of damage. At 1.1 megapascals, however, bleeding was observed with the skull, but when the skull was removed, there was no sign of bleeding in the brain tissue. This suggests that the bleeding was localized in the meningeal layer between the skull and the brain tissue. To confirm that there was no tissue damage, we used nissl to stain for, neuron da for neuronal damage, GFAP and IBA1 to stain for signs of inflammation, and caspase 3 to stain for signs of apoptosis. Using the non-injection and non-stimulated side of both the TRPV1 negative and positive mice at the control, there were no significant differences in any of the protein expression levels in the mouse brain at 0.7 or 1.1 megapascals. Gross pathology and immunohistological analysis of inflammatory and apoptotic markers show that TRPV1-mediated sonogenetics at 0.7 megapascal enable safe thermodulation, while damage at the meninges was associated with sonogenetics at 1.1 megapascals, most likely due to the skull heating effects and the close proximity of the meningeal layer to the skull. To conclude, our findings demonstrated the feasibility and safety of using TRPV1-mediated sonogenetics to modulate locomotor behaviors by targeting the motor cortex. Combined with our previous report of TRPV1-mediated sonogenetics for behavior modulation by targeting a deep brain region, this present study suggests that this technique can facilitate neuromodulation at any depth of the mouse brain. I would like to thank my lab members and the funding support for making this work possible. Thank you so much for listening to my talk.